So in Overwatch, what I've been noticing is that one of the heroes that gets picked the most, especially by newer players, is not Tracer, but I see a lot of Genjis flying around, those little ninjas, you know what I mean, the little ninja mans. Everyone wants to be a ninja just because they aren't a ninja in real life, myself included. However, he is probably one of the most difficult heroes to master, and I've been trying to make like a Genji guide for quite a while now and just never really got around to it. So today, I want to give you guys quick tips on how to vastly improve your Genji game in Overwatch. Now, of course, if you guys want a super duper in-depth guide like what I did for Reaper and Tracer, I'll definitely do that once the game releases. But just for now, I'm going to give you some quick tips on how to improve your Genji game. Like I said, he is probably the hardest hero to learn in Overwatch currently, yet he is probably the most picked hero in Overwatch currently, at least by newer players. So I figured I'd just sort of lend a helping hand, per se, and help you guys try to figure out this hero. There's really only three things that I want to touch on today. The first being uh, make sure you utilize his mobility a lot you know make sure you start flanking a lot he is a flanker if you find yourself in the front lines throwing ninja stars at like tanks and not really doing much yeah that's probably not the right idea I mean Genji is an assassin I mean come on he's a fucking ninja you, you have to you have to flank you have to use his wall climb double jump whatever you got to do uh, I believe you can also use a swift strike to gain some verticality but swift strike will actually shoot you into the air so Genji has a lot of options, right? He's got tons and tons of options, so make sure you learn the maps. Whatever map you're on, learn all the flanking routes, learn all the different ways to get around, um, because Genji's a straight-up flanker. He specializes in messing up people in the background, you know, killing supports, assassinating those people way in the back. He is absolutely fantastic against people who are defending way in the back, like snipers, even Bastion. You know, Bastion's pretty vulnerable to a good Genji. So you have a lot of options, and you gotta be able to use them, you know, you gotta be able to use all your mobility, you gotta be able to use your wall climb, swift strike, whatever you gotta do to get behind the enemy lines. Now a little short mini tip here within this tip, a tip within a tip, tip squared, um, you want to take a look at Genji's sort of high priority targets, right? What I found playing as Genji, Roadhog will eat you, Reinhardt will probably eat you, uh, most tanks can survive you, so what you really want to do is focus down on the squishy heroes, right? Take out the supports, take out Zenyatta, take out Mercy, take out the snipers. Uh, you can go for defense characters, but I would watch out for Mei. Part of flanking is also learning when to pick your targets, uh, who to pick your targets. It's all about timing. Uh, you, you don't want to go up against a tank when there's a support next to him, healing him. You obviously want to go for the support. If you see a line of people coming out from spawn and they don't see you, go for the last guy, please. Please, for the love of God, do not go for the first guy, because all the other guys behind him are going to see you. I mean, these are the sort of common sense that kind of come along with um, stealth type hero gameplay. And as you play more as Genji, you'll, you'll sort of figure out which heroes you're you're not supposed to go against. Uh, the common ones that most everyone knows is Mei, Symmetra, Winston, because you can't actually deflect their shots at you. Uh, Mei can freeze you, Symmetra does a shit ton of damage, Winston is just... Winston. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean those three are the, are the main ones, but I also found that Roadhog is also really good at countering Genji. I mean, a hook, shotgun blast will usually kill you, and if it doesn't, he's usually tanky enough or can at least heal himself to be tanky enough to uh, to basically just gobble up any sort of damage you throw at him and just kill you in the next shotgun blast. So. Be super careful around these sort of heroes. I'm sure there's plenty of other counters. I mean, you can even say Fair is a tough matchup. Uh, McCree's also a tough matchup. So Genji's got a lot. I mean, he's definitely not an invincible character. I would say he's more niche. All right. So that that last tip was uh, was pretty long. So let's just call that tip number two. So this is uh, that was tip number two. We're gonna move on to tip number three. Quick and easy here, guys. Uh, tip number three is to master your combos as well as your shurikens. Now, when I first stepped into playing Genji, I'm gonna admit it, totally honest with you guys, I was a complete scrub, and I sort of figured out why. Uh, the main issue is that I was treating him like I would treat. Uh, Soldier 76, Tracer, you know, those heroes typically re rely on their gun. I mean, sure, you could argue that Tracer relies on mobility, but Genji, his shurikens on paper, currently, they don't do that much damage. Um, they have nerfed his, his DPS down by 20%. I'll post some actual numbers right here on the screen. Uh, they do 28 per, uh, per shuriken, which adds up to 84 damage each burst, and that's on the, the, the primary fire. Obviously, the fan will also do the same amount of damage, but it hits twice as fast, so the DPS goes up twice as much. But 
If you start comparing his DPS, no matter which way, which fire mode you use, it's still going to be outclassed by the other uh, offense heroes. I mean, look at Tracer. She does 240 DPS per second. So, you know, get to really know the shurikens. Maximize every piece of damage you can get out of them because they don't do that much damage on paper when you start comparing it to, like, Tracer or Reaper. Even Soldier 76 has higher DPS than Genji. Uh, that may change in the future, so don't yell at me if it's different in the future. But part of the reason why Genji is so hard is because his shurikens are tough to land. So the first part of, of this third tip I have was to know your shurikens, right? Learn how to aim them, learn, learn when to use which firing mode. That is pretty key. Now the second part that I learned from playing Genji is uh, you can't just dump a magazine of ninja stars into someone and expect them to die quickly. You actually have to use your combos. In fact, it is all in the combos. Every move he has is basically a way to kill someone. It racks up the damage really quickly. His damage is sort of spread out across all of his moves, if, it, if that makes sense. It's not like Reapers where you just unload your shotgun and then you're done. See, with, with Genji, you gotta like utilize that melee a lot. Use your melee, use your swift strike, use your fan. We have to, the typical combo that I like to use uh, that racks up a lot of damage pretty quickly is uh, get up right in someone's face, usually preferably behind them, fan them a couple times, dish out that quick shuriken DPS, or, or open up with a volley if they're farther away, and then go in for a melee strike into a swift strike. The melee attack actually gets canceled by the swift strike, so you you can hit both of them really quickly and rack up some easy burst damage on the target. Now remember, you want to focus on assassinating those squishy heroes, right? You know, when you go up to Zenyatta, make sure you land your combo correctly. If if somehow Zenyatta survives and their teammate kind of whips around and tries to kill you, protect their Zenyatta like an angry grizzly bear, you, you may be fucked. I mean, yes, Genji can get away, but chances are, man, it gets a whole lot more difficult for you if you are unable to assassinate assassinate someone really quickly. So make sure you start to get really familiar with your melee attack range, you know, get familiar with your combo, really start weaving it all together. Now deflect is also another great move. A lot of people use it to survive, but in my opinion it's a fantastic dueling move. You know, when you go up against a Bastion, when you go up against a Soldier 76 or a Reaper, whipping out a quick deflect when they don't expect it, you know, when they're already shooting at you, is a great way to sort of reset the battle. Because when you have deflect on any sort of damage they shoot at you gets reflected back to them so long as you keep your crosshair on them. So deflect is a great way to sort of, you know, switch up the uh, switch up the pace of an engagement. Now his ultimate ability, the Dragon Blade, I mean that is an awesome ability. However, it is definitely <laughs> definitely supposed to be used wisely. If you walk in there into a group of enemies with your sword hanging out, it, it's not a good look. It, it is not a good look, man. You're gonna get taken down so fast. Sure, you can use deflect while you have your dragon blade up, but the optimal time is basically when the enemy is distracted by your friendlies, by your allies, and they don't even notice you sneaking up behind them. What you want to do is drop in from behind them, start taking out the guys in the back, preferably the squishies, and basically swift strike to people and just, you know, zip around ninjaing people to death. You want to make sure you use chaos to your advantage. An easy way to sort of keep track of where your allies are is to keep your eye on the map. You know, they'll show up as blue chevrons on the screen. And basically, you know, when blue chevrons meet bad guys, that means go in there. You know, even if you don't get a good flank, you can oftentimes just blend into the chaos of a team fight and get a few free hits on the enemy. But the sort of core elements that I outlined here in this video, these are just the basics, right? These are just supposed to make you aware of, of how to play Genji, not necessarily to the letter. Now, if you guys want me to make a super detailed video on Genji, expect, you know, going through all different scenarios, and things like that. I am more than happy to put that together, just not anytime soon, just because I don't have enough footage for it from the closed beta, so we're gonna have to wait until the open beta starts so I can start collecting footage again. But yeah, I hope this video has proven helpful to you guys. I'm sure a number of you guys out there already know this, especially you Genji veterans out there. Uh, the stuff I cover here is, is pretty obvious stuff to, maybe to you guys, but I'm assuming to the absolute beginner who doesn't know much about Genji, who doesn't know much about Overwatch, may find this useful. Uh, a lot of people will approach Genji the wrong way. I see it all the time. I saw it happen many times in the closed beta. I saw it happen many times in the stress test weekends. So I figured I'd make this a video to sort of clarify how I would approach Genji. Now let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And I guess until next time, I'll see you in the next one.